Now the plot to The Hobbit is, well, basically a long time ago, these orcs take over the dwarf's territory slash mountain. They then have a dragon that comes out and burns everyone alive. These dwarfs don't have a place to call home. Um, and then we go to the Shire where Frodo is chosen by Gandalf to go on this journey with 13 dwarfs to reclaim victory and to kill a dragon, I think. Right, this movie was shot in 48 frames per second. If you guys aren't familiar with that, normal movies are usually shot in 24 frames per second, and this one was double that in 48. So what does 48 frames per second do? Well, it makes the movie a little bit more lifelike and fluid. You know, it, it doesn't look like you're looking through that magical glow of a movie. It's more like looking through a window to another universe, but in this universe with 48 frames per second, everything has bad hair lighting and they're moving a little too fast. It looks completely unnatural. And then what it also does is it makes the CGI look very bad you shall not make a movie in 48 frames per second. You know, if they would have shot this movie in 24 frames per second like they did with all the other Lord of the Rings movies, I think a lot of the scenes would have looked a lot better. They would have had a more epic cinematic look. And the CGI would have blended a little bit more with the film. So once again, in The Hobbit, you go on this big journey across Middle Earth. You know, there's 13 dwarfs. And then you have Bilbo Baggins who joins along for the adventure and he's asked to come along by Gandalf who's, by the way, Gandalf's always a badass. Now the movie does have 13 dwarfs in this movie and you really only get to know half of them, which, you know, I can't blame the movie. You can't really get to know all 13 dwarfs. All you know is they're all badasses and they like to eat. Now the main dwarf in this movie who's like the leader of the dwarfs who wants to go find home again at his mountain and his father was killed by an orc. His performance was really good in the movie and I really bought into his character and you kind of felt sorry for him. Now this movie does kind of drag out a little bit too long. Now originally this is supposed to be a two-parter. One, two. But they kind of went a little too literal and taking everything they could from the novel and putting it into the movie. Now I know a lot of you fans of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit are going to be like, no, no, no fucking way. Eat shit. Die asshole. You don't respect the rings. I don't respect you. And that's completely fine but there was one scene that took 15 minutes of a, a wizard who used bunnies as a sleigh that served no purpose in the movie whatsoever it moved absolutely nothing in the plot it was just there to take up time so we can make this three parts or at least that's my opinion visually this movie has a lot of great looking 3d scenes the cgi motion capture at some parts was just amazing to look at but in other parts the 48 frames per second completely ruined the illusion. But I'm gonna say my favorite scene in this entire movie is when the confrontation between Bilbo Baggins and Gollum goes down. The Gollum is what I'm going to turn into in 50 years because I'm I'm not gonna eat, I'm not gonna see sunlight. It's soft and juicy. I don't know what the hell that was. That was kind of a Gollum impression, but a little bit weird. That's actually how I'm gonna sound in 60 years. That's the truth. So anyway, the climax of the movie really paid off. If it wasn't for that, you know, I don't think this movie would have done a lot for me, but the last hour definitely was my favorite part of the entire film. You know, overall, I'm gonna have to give this movie a B minus. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.